All right, so I got a little bit of free space on my calendar because I canceled a um, an appointment, a conversation I was supposed to have with a guy who, quite frankly, what's going on, Mark? Who, uh, you know, I have no reason to continue, you know, following the guy um, other than it just wasn't the right conversation for my show. And I found this out really just by chance um, because the uh, the conversation was booked through an agency. And hey, what's, what's going on, Mark? Good to see you, man. And uh, what's going on, Mark? Another Mark, other Mark. And um, so I was booked through this conversation through an agency. And the funny thing is, is I had al was already learning about this guy and read about this guy and heard heard his story and validated his story. And I was thinking, man, that'd be a cool conversation to have because he started out homeless and he worked himself up and, you know, became a multimillionaire. Uh, not quickly, but, you know, rather quickly, more quickly than most people would think. And then I get connect connected by or I get contacted by this agency who, hey, what's going on? Hey, absolutely, Mike. And uh, Justin, and um, so I, this agency contacts me out of the blue. You know how it is, it's your reticulated act activating system, your RAS. When you think of something, when I think of something, it generally comes to fruition. Um, not immediately, but this one was actually pretty quick. It was within a week of me learning about this guy. The agency contacted me and said, hey, this guy wants to have a conversation with you for your show. And so I, we booked it, and this was a while back. This was a couple months ago, and it, our, we were scheduled for today. And then about a week or so ago, I get an email that the agency is no longer working with this individual. And so yesterday I contacted him. We were still scheduled, and I didn't know if he was still going to work with me, you know, have the conversation regardless of the him not working with that, with that agency anymore. I didn't know what the situation was at all. And I said, hey, are we still going to have a conversation? I know you're not working with that agency, but we can still have a conversation. I looked your story up. I dig what you got going on and all this stuff, right? So he replies back and says, hey, you know, I just realized that um, podcasting isn't really doing anything for me. So, you know, and then he asks how many people are downloaded, how many episodes do I have downloaded, how many listeners do I have? So right there just told me that it was really all about him and whatever product that he had to sell. And I generally don't have a problem with that as long as the person that I'm gonna have a conversation with also wants to add value to other people, wants to pay it forward and add value to other people. That's the whole purpose for the Men of Abundance podcast is I have these conversations with men, mostly men, women as well, but mostly men who are living a life of abundance, have a kick in the gut moment to tell, to share, and what they learn from that, and somehow that they're paying it forward within their community or within the world or so on and so forth. Now, I happen to know that this individual is actually doing good things for other people, but that comment just completely turned me off and I just made the decision that I didn't want to have that conversation uh, with that individual anymore uh, because it wasn't genuine. It wasn't for, you know, to add value to the Men of Abundance listeners in 63 different countries and I value that and I value their time I value the listeners time and some of you may be listeners of the men of abundance podcast which is cool if you're not go get registered for the men of abundance podcast not registered but subscribe on iTunes or whatever because I'm going to be telling my origin story here this week it's going to post this week and today uh, the episode is posting with Tucker Bearden so you definitely want to hear that one so make sure you get on iTunes or your favorite podcast player and get subscribed to Men of Abundance. Now, I also said that I'm going to share some of my my bookshelf. Now, these are books that are on my bookshelf. I've got m many more books than this that are actually in digital form and in audio form that are either on my phone or on my computer. So this is just a small collection of books because once I get an audio book, a book that I want to reference multiple times and write in, I write in all my almost all my books and I highlight. Um, I'll show you some of that, and I'm also going to show you my most cherished, valuable books to me. All right, so you ready for that? All right, let's do this. So here's my bookshelf. It's a small one, but it's got a lot of books on it. This is the book I'm reading right now, Unshakable by Tony Robbins. You see, I got my pen. These are a couple books I've read as well. The, the Tony Robbins book there, Money, Master of the Game, 
I have not read that entire book. That is a lot of information, but uh, No Easy Day is a good book. Let's, uh, I'll go up there in just a minute. So let me sit down here on the floor and show you some of these books. Now, these are really cool. This is books. These are uh, newsletters, actually, that I keep because these newsletters are all from, let's see who this is from, all kinds of stuff. These are things that I print out, some of the ebooks that I get that I print out. This is a secret coaching club. This is from Mark Mawinney. Uh, one of my coaches that um, is out in Canada right now, and he has this newsletter that I suggest you get a hold of. If you are a coach, I suggest you get a hold of this um, this newsletter because these are really, really valuable, and I keep those and I reference those as often as possible. Um, Boy Entrepreneur is a really cool book. I'm not going to go through all these. Don't worry. But Patrick Snow is the guy that got me excited about writing my own book. Kevin Hart, oh my goodness gracious, you want some good information and to laugh your ass off. You got to get that book. That was a gift uh, for Christmas last year. A couple others. Here's one of the biggest ones. These are all stuff that I got from Japan when I was down in Japan um, hanging out. Something from Triple Room Medical Center. Um, but this book right here, man, Abundance by Peter Diamandis. If you ever are considering or questioning the abundance in the world, Peter Diamandis has put this together and there is data behind all of the abundance that he talks about in the world. And this is my guide, man. This right here is unbelievable. Look at the data. I mean, I'm talking data. All right. Now, I suggest you get this book on audio first. It's great to listen to. And then um, go ahead and, and get the hard copy if you want, because this proves how much abundance is in the world. Now, a lot of these books have been gifted to me. Like this one up here is a gift. I actually got this one twice. This, this is one of my cherished books right here. I'm just going to throw that one out there. My son wrote this book uh, last year when he was eight. I think he was eight or nine. He wrote this book for me. Very, that's one of my most cherished books right there. Shane, what's going on, brother? What's going on? Now, this is the way, if you're going to send a gift to somebody, this is from, from one of my podcast guests, and he put this together. I took some of the stuff out of there. I got his card in there, had a couple pens in there, and marketers put his books in there. It's freaking amazing, man. Um, some other books, some really good books I've got here, Shalene Johnson and Sean T. Uh, one of my oldest books that I have up here is How to Win Friends and Influence People and Think and Grow Rich. Obviously, every entrepreneur should have those. Og Mandino, the greatest salesman in the world. Really small little book. I got one here. I gift those once in a while. Um, Dave Ramsey, of course. And then I've got all these other books down here. You've seen a lot of these. You know, um, Dean Gra uh, Graziosi. Um, the uh, Millionaire Success Habits, Grant Cardone, of course. Uh, goodness, a lot of, look at this. These are gifted books. I haven't read every one of these books because many of them are gifted. Now, here's a book. Um, the Outward Mindset's really good. And there was another one I was going to show here that I really uh, think every man, every man and woman should read. Um, where is it at? I uh, just saw it a little a little while ago. Anyway, I'll find it in just a minute. But I'm going to show you my most cherished books. These are my most cherished books right here. See this? This one right here. Arnell, what's going on, man? How you doing? This right here. Now, this is some private stuff. What this is, I'm not going to open this because this is private stuff. These are my journals. This is a journal. This is another journal. All right. And I've, of course, got the Freedom Journal over here that um, uh, John Lee Dumas put together, the uh, Mastery uh, Journal as well. And I'm going to show you a journal right now that is by far the best, one of the, this is my most cherished journal right here. This is the journal that I journal in for my wife. Now, there's some very private stuff in there. And I've got another journal that's brand new that I'm going to be, I've got set up because I'm filling up my journals. This is another journal that I have here. And all of these journals, I have multiple journals. And the reason why I have multiple journals is because, Karen, how you doing? How you doing, Aunt Karen? The reason why I have multiple journals is because each journal, one journal is my daily thoughts. Just stuff when anything comes into my head, I jot it down. And I keep one here. I got one in the bedroom. 
And every time I have a thought, I write it down. The reason why I write my thoughts down is because it saves it, it empties space out in my head so that I can have more amazing thoughts. This is a thought process that goes back thousands of years, hundreds of thousands of years. It's actually, in many cases, many of the stories in the Bible were because they were journals written down and there were stories that were written down and of course they were handed down by God and there's many different stories in there. But think back to Benjamin Franklin and think back to, Sean, what's going on? How you doing? Think back to all of the great people in the world, all of them have multiple journals. So some of my journals are just thoughts that I write down. I got another journal that's all my business ideas. And I have another journal that is the one I showed you is journal that I write in um, for my wife. And I just, I just can't say enough about journals. Now, I will also say that some of my books I turn into journals. The reason why I say that is because, for instance, um, I've got a book here. Let me let me turn this around. I've got a book here. Matter of fact, this one that's open right here. This is Expert Secrets um, with Russell Brunson. Look at this. Look at all the notes that I have in here. I, I make it a journal because as I read through some of these books, I I um, I go ahead and what I do is as I, as I read through some of the books, I actually do the steps. In the books, imagine that. I actually, when there's that type of business book and there are steps to take, then I actually do the steps and I write in the book the steps that I take. And I write in the book my thoughts, how I can apply that in my life or in my business or in my relationships, depending on the books that I have. The Five Love Languages is the other book that I know is on the shelf over there that I wanted to show you. The Five Love Languages is another one of my favorite books. But my journals are by far my favorite. The reason why my journals are my favorite and most cherished books, most valuable books, is because many of the books that you see over there and all the content that I listen to on podcasts and audiobooks, videos, I write that information as it applies to me and it translates through my brain and it goes onto paper. And those are journals that I reference all the time. Those are the books that I reference all the time because they're my thoughts based off the information that I found in each one of those books. And when I go back and read the book again, if I do do that, I don't always do that, but when I do, then I learn something new. Just like when you see a, a movie that you've seen two or three times already, you might see something different in the movie that you didn't notice the, before. Same with these books. Same with my journaling. I'll go back and I'll watch, I'll, I'll read through the journal and I'll go, dang, I completely forgot about that. And that's something else that I can apply in my life right now or in my relationship. So if you guys, if you're not journaling, learn how to journal. It's not hard. You don't have to make it a science or anything like that. You don't have to go buy the uh, mastery journal or the, uh, what's the other journal over there? The, um, the, the one by John Lee Dumas, I'm trying to look at it over here, um, Freedom Journal, the Freedom Journal by John Lee. You don't have to go out and buy a journal like that. Just get a notebook. I've got, I just found a notebook. I was going through some of my, my other um, bookshelf over here, some of my memorabilia that I have. I have a bunch of memorabilia from Sinai, Egypt, and some of my other official paperwork and stuff like that. But I found a notebook. There it is. I have it over here. And this notebook is, look how old this thing is. But it's basically a journal of sorts that I started writing in uh, uh, just uh, a long time ago. I, I usually put dates on there too. So fit, journal. So I, I have a little notepad in your pocket. Have one next to the bed. Um, whatever you can do to have something with you so that you can keep that information. Don't just write it on slips of paper. I don't like sticky notes because they get lost. I like journals that are hardbound so that the notes stay in there and I can reference them as much as possible, as much as I need to. And I love going back to my old journals because I'm always, it, it, it's kind of nostalgic. It's like, dang, I was thinking of this three, four years ago and I made this happen. It worked out because, and, and I did that or I experienced that or I, we went on that vacation or I, I accomplished that in my relationship or I accomplished that within my business or within my vocation. And it's all because I wrote it down and I put a plan to it. 
And then some of the stuff I even put dates in there. There are tons of dates in these journals because when I write something down that I want to get done, I put a date to it and I make it realistic. And then I build a plan around that. And I don't always worry about how it's going to happen. It's just, it, it, that works itself out. You figure it out. Tucker, what's going on, brother? Your episode, your episode is posting today. I promise you. Man, I, listen to everybody. If you guys are not following Tucker, Tucker Bearden right now, click on his name and follow this man right now. His episode, our conversation that for Men of Abundance is going to post today here in about an hour. And um, listen to that episode. It is going to blow your mind. This one of the most genuine men I personally know is Tucker Bearden. So make sure you follow this guy. It will serve you well. All right. Uh, you got it, Tucker, any day, man. Hey, so I'm going to get going. I got another meeting here in a few minutes. And um, I love every one of you guys, man. Take care and share this if you care to. Give me some, some likes and some hearts and all that good stuff. And uh, just enjoy the rest of the week. Take care, guys. Journal. <laughs>